Hello students, welcome to MEC 1321 Engineering Statics. Uh, today we're going to go over sections 5.3, uh, 5.4 in the book. Um, 5.3 are the equations of equilibrium and section 5.4 is 2 and 3 fourths members. So let's go ahead and get right to it. Uh, 5.3, equations of equilibrium. Uh, previously, in, in section 5.1, we introduced the equations of equilibrium, and we introduced them in the Cartesian vector form. Uh, in statics, uh, where we have uh, bodies that have no acceleration uh, and have either a constant velocity or a velocity equal to, to zero, and they're also rigid bodies, uh, have two equations of equilibrium uh, that must be satisfied. The first equation is that the resultant force, which is equal to the sum of the forces, is equal to zero. And the second equation is that the resultant moment, which is equal to the sum of the moments, is equal to zero. Now when dealing with system of, of forces that lie on the x and y plane, meaning 2D problems, the force equilibrium can be resolved into x and y components. Um, thus, the scalar equations of equilibrium for 2D problems are as follows, where we have uh, the sum of the forces uh, in the x direction is equal to zero, the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to zero, and the sum of the moments, which is out of the page, meaning the moments are coming out of the page, uh, are equal to zero. Um, and so, looking at the example diagram here, we have a, a plate and it has a series of uh, a system of forces, force one, two, three, and four, applied to it, we can apply these uh, equations of equilibrium, uh, some of the forces in X, some of the forces in the Y, and some of the moments anywhere uh, in, within the body. And each of those must be equal to zero. And these are the classic equations that you'll use. Some of the forces X, some of the forces Y, and one moment equation. However, there are alternative sets of equations uh, that can be used uh, in lieu of fx, fy, and m. Sometimes it is easier to solve problems using al an alternative set of equilibrium equations. There are two such alternatives for 2D problems. The first alternative set, uh, set one, uh, is a set that has two moments. So we do the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to zero. The sum of the moments at point A is equal to zero. And the sum of the moments at point B is equal to zero. Um, and this situation or this set of equations is only valid when the line AB is not parallel to the y axis. So if A and B were parallel to the y axis, we would not be able to use this set of equations. But since A and B is not parallel to the y-axis, we're able to use this set of equations. Another alternative set uh, which could be used is the three-moment equation uh, set. In this case, we can do the sum of the moments at A equal to zero, the sum of the moments at B equal to zero, and the sum of the moments at C is equal to zero. Now this alternative set is only valid when A, B, and C do not all lie on the same line. Uh, and so the example would be if C was here, A, B, and C would all lie on the same line and we would not be able to use this set. In general, um, within this course, the two alternative sets of equilibrium equations will not be needed. Um, up to this point. And we, and we will not really see these two alternative sets of equilibrium equations very much until we learn the method of sections, which is in chapter 6, uh, section 6.3. Um, please revisit this video uh, uh, and, this, and the section on, in the book pertaining to this material when you need help understanding how to use these alternative uh, sets of equations. So now let's kind of go into a procedure of analysis. 
Um, so in the previous video, we, we learned about free body diagrams. Uh, we learned about the equilibrium equations. Now let's, let's talk about a, a procedure for how to actually solve a, a 2D problem uh, of equilibrium. Uh, so the first step is, of course, to craft your free body diagram. You want to establish your x and y coordinate system, and you want to draw an outline of the shape of, of the body of interest. Um, following that, you want to show all of the forces in a couple moments that act on the, bottle, uh, on the body. Uh, in particular, you want to identify the knowns and the unknowns in terms of the external forces and put, uh, put a, a line that distinguishes the vector as well as an arrow that indicates the sense of those uh, known and unknown forces as well as coupled moments. Uh, once you've done that, then you want to dimension the body. You want to fill in uh, the information that can be filled in in the free body diagram. So if there's a certain angular information that you're given and you observe in the free body diagram that you can do, do basic geometry or, or use basic trig in order to find missing angles or, or find additional dimensional information, then you do that. Once you've established an excellent free body diagram, then you can start applying the equations of equilibrium. Uh, apply the moment equation of, of equilibrium where you do the sum of the moments is equal to zero, about some point O. Um, apply the force equilibrium equations where the sum of the forces in the x or the sum of the forces in the y are equal to zero. And then once you've established these equilibrium equations, uh, study them, identify if you have the appropriate number of equations for the number of unknowns, and then solve them algebraically to produce the final solution. So now let's move on to 5.4 which is two and three-fourths members. Sometimes problems can be simplified if we can identify the members that are subject to two or three-fourths. Let's focus for now on two-fourths members. For any two-fourths member, the two forces acting on the member must have the same magnitude, act in opposite directions, and have the same line of action directed along the line that joins the two points where the force acts. Now I know when you hear all of this it can be a bit confusing so let's actually look at a diagram or an example here uh, so that we can determine what is a two-force member. If we look at the first uh, diagram here, uh, A, we see that we have a member AB and it has a force A and a force B. Uh, force A and force B are not equal to each other. So it's clear that they do not have the same magnitude. So, they've, so it's not a two-force member. Uh, force A and force B also do not have the same line of action. They do not, the, the, the direction of force, uh, force B does not go through the direction of force A. They're not coincident. Um, there's some point that they meet at, so there's a coincident point where they meet, but they're not actually parallel and in line with each other. So that's another violation. Um, and they're not in perfect opposite direction to each other, force A and force B. Now let's look at uh, diagram B. In this case, force A is equal to F and force B is equal to F. So they have the same magnitude, check mark. Um, if we look at them, the second thing is, are, do they act in opposite directions? Well, if we look at them, uh, they're parallel to each other, and they do act in opposite direction. So another check mark. However, if we look at the last thing that says, have the same line of action, it's clear because they're parallel to each other, they don't actually, that the lines of actions do not go through each other. They do not have the same line of action. And so this example here violates the two-force two member rule, and it's not a two-force member. Now let's look at the final one. Uh, in this final one, FA is equal to FB. They have the same magnitude. Uh, do they act opposite to each other? Yes, they have opposite directions to each other, uh, opposite unit uh, uh, directions. And then also, if we look at it, the line of action, they share the same line of action, a line that goes through point A and point B. And so check mark, this is a two-force member. Uh, and then since it is a two-force member, it allows us to 
you know, more or less neglect the curved behavior that is this curvature that's going through this member. We can purely think of this member as point A and point B with forces that are, uh, that are opposite equal to each other and collinear. Now let's look at three-force member. For any three-force member, moment equilibrium can only be satisfied if the three forces form either a concurrent or a parallel force system. So if we have a member and we apply three forces to it, the only way we can consider it to be a true three-force member is if it is either concurrent or parallel. In a concurrent system, a, a, a concurrent system uh, is a system that if the line of action of F1 and F2 intersect at some point O, then the line of action of F3 must pass through point O to satisfy moment equilibrium. So a concurrent system requires that the line of action of all three forces intersect at some point in space O. Another system uh, where we can consider a three-force system is a parallel system. In this system, it's parallel system, if the three forces are parallel, then moment equilibrium is equal to zero anywhere along the beam. So in this case, we can actually do the sum of the moments at any point along the beam and it'll be equal to zero. In a concurrent system, however, uh, because this requirement of an intersecting point O, the sum of the moments is only satisfied at that point O. So now that we've discussed the, the uh, equations of equilibrium and, and demonstrated how to use them in 2D, as well as gone over two and three-fourths members, um, it's important that you go to the book and read these sections, read uh, 5.3 and 5.4. At the end of 5.4 are a number of fundamental problems. Uh, these are some, some very low-level problems. Um, that will that are, are more for verifying that you understand the theories that have that that have been shown up to this point in the chapter. So it is very important for you to try to do some of these fundamental problems as well as the examples within uh, 5.3 and 5.4, so you can kind of more un more uh, better understand uh, exactly the theory that has been explained in this video. Um, and of course, there's going to be a quiz uh, on this material when you come to class. Um, so if there's any questions or any confusion on the theory, uh, please do uh, post a comment to the YouTube video uh, or give me an e send me an email and I'll be able to address your concerns. Thank you for watching this video. I'm Dr. Stewart. See you guys in class.